So in today I've got a uh, Sony K611S deck that's in with a complaint from the, the owner that the uh, the capstan motor or a uh, motor is basically too loud. And they suffer from capstan motor failure, bushes wear on them, simply because it's running all the time. So if I add a long and heavy use, then it's basically, that's the way it's going to run. So on receipt, it's in pretty decent nick. I think he's had a bit of a, a look. We were, we were messaging over email and I said, you know, try a bit of oil through the capstan bushes and I don't think it helped. So on receipt, the, uh, the cassette door's loose there, so we'll, we'll remove that. But uh, the intent for this one is, is a new motor and uh, belts while we're in there as well. So we'll give it a bit of a play, see where we are with it. And you can hear that's quite loud as it is. Um, as far as I'm aware, everything else is working on it. Um, it's, you know, as well, as good as it should be. So, door open and close seems to work fine. All the switches and whatever else. Uh, I've tested everything. The Dolby selector shows up on the screen there. Uh, that's generally another kind of common fault is that switch doesn't want to play. And then it comes to uh, testing out a tape and see how it goes. So when we test out the tape, it's t it chooses the right tape on the selector there. So the selector the switches are all working fine. Uh, I don't think there's anything on this tape, to be honest with you. So uh, it's just a case of, you know, just, just a function test, really, just to see what needs doing. And a great way to function test these decks is to stick a recording calibration on. This will test the playback and the recording and the levels all at the same time. Uh, so this is a great way of testing things like your record head and the voltage is correct. Is it picking up what it should do? And uh, and this calibrated pretty pretty straightforward and pretty easily. So I've not recorded taking the uh, the transport out because it's in plenty of other videos that I've got. I've got two, I think another two videos of removing the transport. But transport's out. It looks clean. Um, there's no. No, nothing visible the cords on the back of the motor there it's quite a common motor so uh we'll get one of these ordered up if i don't have one lying about and it's just a case of stripping the uh, the transport down removing these three screws here as we've done before and that's the motor plate removed so now that's off we can inspect the motor a little bit more closely now and uh, there's you're going to get a little bit of sideways play in the motor which we've got but on this one uh, there's a lot of black gunk in there and uh, presumably from a previous belt change but there's a it feels like there's a lot of play so we'll remove the uh, pulley and yeah there's definitely a lot of side to side play and that side to side play is what's going to cause you noise if this bush on the top is worn then the one inside the motor which you can't get to is also worn so I think there's no other real choice of this one other than replacement I've cleaned out all the rubbish and gunk and IPA'd it but it is what it is so we've got ourselves a nice be a belt kit and a new old stock motor that is absolutely brand new and I've had a quick look at it through the packet, absolutely matches up. There's two terminals on there that are soldered on so you need to desolder a little bit of solder off a new one and then swap the wires over identical. Otherwise all your tapes play in reverse, which isn't usually very useful to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is have a quick look so that's uh, the wobbly one and this one has absolutely zero play in it whatsoever so it's a good swap so first of all uh, we need to desolder these two wires then that form part of the transport and once they're out there swap them over the exact way around and that's it pretty straightforward really so i swapped them over make sure that this uh, earth strap on this side uh, has got a good connection <coughs> And then it's time for our first belt, which is the, uh, the smallest belt, which is a selector belt, which involves removing a little bit more of a transport in order to get to it. So uh, once you've unscrewed these uh, these longer brass screws, there's three in total, there's no way you're going to get that plate off without removing the, uh, the plate arm or the idle arm from the other side. So in order to do that, you need to remove the black protective uh, cover which is also has a light in it and a blue wire that attaches to the top of the transport so once your two screws are out then this just lifts out and from there you can remove the c-clip of the uh, the idle wobbler i like to call it 
and there's a C clip. And then you just need to pop that off. Some of these are tight and some of them aren't. Some of them also have a plastic clip and some of them have a metal clip. So I think this person is a, a, a later revision of the transport. But once that's off, then that just lifts out and that arm comes off there like that. And that allows you to remove the, uh, the board and that from the other side. And just lift that bit off. Try not to move any wheels or anything. Some things are going to get stuck and you'll have to replace them. As you can see, a couple of pulleys. There's the old belt. A couple of pulleys have come out there and that white arm on the left. So it's just a case of replacing these. But that pulley I've just got in my hand needs to be uh, removed anyway to fit the belt. Make sure that arm is fitted the right way around. It sits in the little groove there. And now it's a case of uh, refitting the belt. Refit it on the post first and then over the white wheel. And what that does is it stops it from twisting. And if it wants to twist, it'll pop off, usually at the worst possible moment. So have a look at the, the photo sensors on the back of this, these two black things here. Make sure they're clean, otherwise that can affect playback. These are fine. In fact, this transport is very, very clean compared to other ones I've seen. So refit that pulley then for your selector wheel, and that just sits on top. So once it's down, three longer screws. The first one doesn't only sits on a couple of threads, so don't feel too scared about it, but the other two are pretty straightforward. You just need to uh, attach the earth cable to the third one. And then once it's on, get yourself some tweezers and then find out the tweezers don't reach and then get a screwdriver <laughs> and then just pop that belt on. You only really get one go at this, so you need to make sure it does it for you, it does it properly. So once that's on then, it's time to refit our black uh, faceplate over the transport in there. And before you do that, you need to refit this arm. So it's just a case of just popping it on, pop it in position. And then once it's in position, you need to line that C-clip up, which is, in truth, not fun. But uh, this is pretty straightforward. Just, just pop it in and there's no right and wrong way. It just sits on. And then you get a C-clip. I generally sit it in a rough position at a 90 degree angle to wherever you're looking. And then once it's in, you can just get some pliers and then uh, just pop it in to where it needs to be. Again, you only really get one go at this, so do it properly. Otherwise that clip will end up either flying away or inside the transport that you've only just rebuilt. So you just need to be positive control. Once that's in place then, the last thing you need to do is get your black face plate and this sits uh, on some tabs at the bottom so you need to make sure it's sitting in the tabs otherwise your tapes won't fit. Thread that blue wire through the transport and then sit it on the tabs at the bottom and then it'll also sit snugly on the top so that you can get your screws in. Bit of a fiddly process. On this one I, I remove the transport with the door shut um, that's simply because it causes less risk to anything moving whilst you've got the, fully, the transport fully apart and uh, obviously the less risk that you have the, the less chance of it happening and then you, you do all that work and you put it all back together and it, it's in three modes at once so although it is easier to have the door open it's less risky so now we can fit our new motor then the wires need to be facing the way that I've shown in the video there so they can plug in the top of your transport and it's just two little diddy uh, black countersunk screws. And they just uh, screw directly into the motor and hold it into place. These motors are used in all sorts of stuff, so you'll find there's loads of holes. It's just a case of just matching up the two that best fit, as long as that wire is positioned the way it is on the video there. And that'll become apparent once we're done because it needs to plug into the top of the transport. Don't forget your pulley. This bit fits with the thickest side of it closest to the motor. And basically try and get this as close as you can to the motor without it touching the bushing. Which is a bit of an art in itself. I've given this one a good clean up as well and the motor's had a little drop of oil on the bushes to stop while I'm flutter or to at least make it as best as possible.
this capstan's also been out and uh, I oiled all the, the shaft and everything and replaced the plastic washers. But for some reason I ended up not recording it. It was one of the cases where I thought I was recording but I wasn't. So the best way to do this I find is to put the belt around the capstan and then lift it up away from the transport a little bit, keep the tension on it, connect it to your motor pulley and then kind of swing the whole thing down and then sit it on its little feet there. Once it's on its feet on those top two black plastic bits, it isn't going anywhere. So then it's just a case of refitting the screws. And the one at the bottom has a little plastic washer on it. Don't forget that some of the plastic washer on it. I think that actually does a job at seating the whole thing all in place. So once that one screws in, then just fire the two screws in. It's a pan head, two black ones, just so you don't get mixed up with the brass ones. The brass ones are the ones that hold the full transport into place on the chassis. Now once they're in, essentially that's your chassis work done. As long as you've oiled everything on the way, and you know, I'll give the heads a clean. But one weakness on this transport is this plug. This is the the voltage plug to the record head, and it's very tall. It's very long, and generally they're very loose. I don't know why, but they just are. So what I like to do is. Uh, just flip the board over if it's, if it's visibly loose like this one is i'll flip the the main board over and just inspect the contacts because there's one trace that is very very thin and generally they can either be on the verge or they can be broken which leads to recording issues it definitely leads to calibration issues and uh, but what it's doing is while it, when it's recording it's just not erasing the tape beforehand so this is the power supply to the erase head so basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it over. Generally there's a bit of uh, dry solder on it or something. And uh, if there is and it's a bit loose, I'll just reflow that solder. And then just for longevity and long term issue prevention, it just means that that couple of seconds while you've already got everything out, just means it's going to uh, positively impact the future. And hopefully this deck will last a lot longer. So this board's held in with some plastic clips once you remove two screws and you just got to nip them together and then you can lift the board up and out of the way. You don't need to unplug everything, you can kind of angle it but the power supply is the main one you need to unplug. So close to you, kind of middle of the screen there you see that's actually loose and there's dry solder connections on it. Some of them I've seen where it's just completely ripped the contacts out the board which is is what it is so i'll just reflow these two and then it just prevents any issues in the future because this this plug in particular does suffer from a bit of dry solder it affects the connection it can affect the recordings all right so now that's done then we can uh, reposition this board in just slide it in carefully sit it on its black plastic tabs and then just push it home and then it's two brass screws up on the far top corner of your screen, as you can see. And then just make sure that's all secure. Stick your back plate on. And then we're just about ready to rock and roll once that's screwed in. Uh, just, just go around and double check all your plugs. The main power plug, obviously, is the, the main one. It's really stiff, the wiring on this one. So you haven't really got much playing it if you want to play with a board so it's always handy to just remove that one and these ribbon cables are just push fit they're both different as well so you can't get one mixed up with the other one and easier connections through to your lcd and whatnot on the front and then it's just a case just going through and making sure everything you've unplugged or disturbed is in secure everything's all in and properly there's no problems with anything there for your transport and we're good with this one. So stick your back plate back on. You'll notice that at the back there you've got some uh, some transistors. That plate there uh, is acts like a heat sink basically. The, the, on this model they put the, the transistors on the connected essentially to the back plate. So the heat sink is the whole chassis, which is lazy I think, but uh, efficient maybe. So when you put the back plate back on, just make sure that's seated correctly and it's not damaging those uh, those transistors because um, if it is 
then that, you're just going to have to go back in again and double check. Anything that's tall I find on a board is susceptible to damage. Now it's time to get our transport back in then. It's pretty straightforward. Sometimes with the door shut, the uh, the arm can get caught on a main board. But on this one, it was, wasn't really a problem. Don't be scared to just lift the, the front panel up a little bit. And then seat it on its, uh, on its screw holes before tightening it down. So it's two pan head brass screws on the top and don't forget there's two underneath as well. Right, you don't have to go mad with the torque or anything on these. You have to be careful here and now, uh, here and now, here and again, because sometimes you can be screwing into plastic. But obviously if you're screwing into metal and you can see it's metal, then you can, you can make it nice and tight and, and make sure it's as secure as it's going to be. Just be careful with the screws on the actual transport because some of them do go into plastic and as soon as you strip it then it's kind of game over. You're going to have to start looking at epoxy or whatever else. So plug your new motor in. As I said it's important that the wires face that way because it's very short and that's basically the only way they'll fit. The blue one is for your light on the black uh, transport cover on the front panel. And these are all our power supplies for our motors uh, and our logic control on the transport. The motors are plugged into the boards, and then the boards are powered by these white plugs. You can't really mess this up, to be honest with you. One of them, I think the small one does fit into the large hole, but you can see that it's, it's too small, it's in the wrong one. And now we can refit all our power supplies for our heads and whatever else. So all these red, white, and uh, the, the smaller white one is connections for your heads and for your erase head and recording head. They just clip home once you press it down. I'm going to leave this one out for a bit simply because I want to avoid any damage to that uh, plug on the board that we've we've sorted out. Uh, but at this stage, I think uh, I do have it plugged in. Well, I think I plugged it in later on. But for initial test now, just test your movement, test it out how the door works, test your transport. Does it play a tape? Does it show the correct levels? You know, uh, does it select the, the mode that you want? which would indicate that everything's been fine when the mode select. And we're all good with the levels there. That's peaking at just above Dolby, which is where this tape likes to do it. Fast forward and wind, all good. Okay. So now I've plugged in the erase head. And then uh, once I've got that erase head plugged in, what we can do is we can uh, go through and just double check everything. That's kind of the last thing that I want to do, simply to avoid any damage to that plug, because it's a bit rubbish. And just gently kind of seat it home. Unfortunately, you get a big glimpse of my grey hair there. But uh, once it's seated and it's clipped all the way home, then um, the last test I'll do on this is to perform a recording calibration, which, as I said before, will test the ability to record erase and play back to itself all at the same time. Right, so once we're plugged in there, then make sure you go to a recordable tape on the calibration, and we're going to try and call that tape. So, the indication that this is calibrating fine is the indication that plug's good. If it, this goes to full scale, then what's happening there is there's no power getting through to the erase head. So uh, if you ever encounter that problem, it's that plug, 100%. As you can see, that's calibrating fine. It really brings us to the end of our testing of the transport and uh, onto a little bit of electrical calibration. So we'll move to the floor now, we'll get it plugged in an amp and we'll uh, run torn through it and have a look at the motor new old stock motors are, are quite stiff to adjust for the first turn because they've been sat there for 25 years you know 3, but put 3000 hertz through it and see where we sit that's just under so it, it's quite difficult that first turn on but once you get it on a little bit of adjustment and we hit 3000 hertz absolutely nail on the head 
and that's it. Right, so the last thing we're going to check is the azimuth. Uh, I've actually just set this up and then adjusted it accordingly so we can see two separate channels here so that is the right channel that is the left channel and then if you put them side by side uh, you can see that they are pretty much in sync so the peaks in the trough should match each other visually a little bit more adjusting there you can see that those are so there's the right channel and the left channel and then together oh that's added Together they are, uh, the peaks and troughs are just about there in phase. I'm just positioning this properly so it doesn't look like I've got one channel massively higher than the other. I'm just adjusting that as you can see and that's playing for our calibration tape. And uh, that azimuth is nicely, uh, as nice as it's going to get. That's, that's pretty good. There's a little bit of movement there, but I'll honestly believe that's my tape. Good stuff. All right, well, that brings us to a close of another one. Uh, this was somebody else's deck, obviously. But, uh, yeah, another one saved. Another Sony for, the, for the, the lifetime that it should lead a little bit longer than what it maybe would have done. Uh, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'd really appreciate it if you enjoyed this video. Maybe you could subscribe does actually help me and uh, it obviously shows me that people are watching these things and I'm not just talking to myself and people want to see these things so if you have any ideas of anything you'd like me to do or anything particular you'd like me to work on uh, maybe you've got something that needs working on and you want me to have a look at it or you'd like me to do a demonstration video of a certain deck or whatever get in touch all right thanks bye